they have to get that push going with Wraith King NP. They have to get really good levels on Ninja Bogey's Grimstroke to maximize that potential as well. And they have to give Moon good farm because the OD, when it does fall behind, it really is quite underwhelming. It needs a good amount of gold to get going and it's not really the best flash farmer. Like it's kind of slow in the jungle. You really play around your mana regen there and it's not the fastest cooldown. So the flash farming potential of Moon isn't that good. If he gets kind of slow down in lane, which it's not, it's probably not going to happen unless they dedicate a support rotation down mid every now and again. But if that OD does go behind, it is a bit hard for it to catch up. Well, luckily for us, Sean, we will be able to get into this game and we'll be able to find out what's going to happen, Arjit. A lot of battle levels there. Very nice to see from him. We get a pause. Lots ah, no pause. Dang it. Uh, that does break tradition a bit, Mike. Maybe does. we'll get one in the first five minutes. Uh, be good to see. That, that would definitely be good to see. Who do you think will bring out the pause, though? Like, do you think Boom ID or Maneski will bring it out? You know, I, I can't say for sure. Um, what I can tell you is that my game is lagging very badly now. That's uh, not a very good sign, considering that I'm in Southeast Asia. And I had a better connection to China, apparently. This is really bad. Yikes from me. Uh, a bit scary, John, but hopefully it fixes itself. What is that? What, where? Bot, the uh, bot rune spot, the flag that was placed down, the a bit of a come on, <laughs> bruh. My goodness. That's a, a very scary, uh, very scary flag to have to look at. Very intimidating indeed. <laughs> Nevertheless, Arjit, uh, gonna say hello to FBZ down at the top lane. Arjit, uh, gonna make a chase now with Ninja Boogie, but it is just gonna be a bit of harassment coming out. Nice Seb there from KP. Nobody want to, wants to contest the Seb either, John. This is very embarrassing for Boom ID. <laughs> it does happen sometimes, Mike. You know, you let the guy have his moment and you just kind of let it go. I have to say that's the first time I'm hearing someone spam out the record scratch. So that's an interesting choice from Boom. Yeah, Fervian. Bringing it out. I mean, no other team's done it. So it could be an interesting strategy from Fervian. We'll see how well it works out. Speaking of Fervian, he has started with a double stout shield, so it looks like he is expecting a hell of a lot of harassment in this in this bot lane for himself. I can't really blame him. Like he's going to be up against KP, and it looks like they are going to keep Raging Potato there on the Prophet as well, and he's already got a Blightstone up on that Nature's Prophet. So this is probably going to be a hell of a lot of harassment towards Fervian. Uh, Keskew will be there, however, to make sure he stays alive. KP might actually end up going down. They've got the tree instead to try and block the KP, forced to eat a fairy fire. Ooh, if Kez'Q was level 2 then, that probably would have been a first blood already, but you've got to be very careful about walking in for those death pulses this early on. Definitely has to be careful. He's not as durable or tanky as he'd want to think, and his region capabilities until he hits maybe level 3, if he invests in that growth shroud, it's, it's not going to be great without that. Meanwhile, top lane FBZ. Almost ends up going down. There was a nice block there from Joe Cam to ensure they couldn't make the chase. Still, a lot of heroes falling low across the map and a lot of aggressive lanes going on already. Of course, we haven't really spoken about the mid lane at all either, but Moon is there again up against Makoto and it does feel like it just favors the OD in this matchup because Makoto can't really go for those long static links because you will just get Astral pretty much immediately. Yeah, it does end up being OD favored as the lane goes on. Initially, it's not, because your level 1, level 2 as the OD is not that amazing. You really have to play around that equilibrium timing and your mana pool before you can start spamming it out. In fact, the cooldown of level 1 imprisonment is not great, so... It is something that Mikoto can play around, and he is certainly maximizing that. FPZ will end up being the first blood here for the side of Mineski. Meanwhile, bot lane Kezcute is getting chased down and looks like he should be dead as well, though, KP. Trying to go for the loop around. It won't even matter. He'll find the right click anyway. That'll be a 0-2 already for Mineski. Great start for them. They have been very, very aggressive during the laning stage, so I'm not really surprised to see two kills coming out already.
Bovian has to be very careful in this safe lane. Just so much harassment coming out constantly on top of him. Raging Potato again with that Blind Stone just not allowing him to come in for those safe last hits. As it stands, I mean, if it keeps going on at this rate, this Sven is really going to get nothing. Yeah, it's again a pretty rough time when you're against two ranged heroes as the Sven. You don't really do too much there. Unless your support does come in and apply some harass, but Kez cute. He, I mean, he has been trying to do work. It's at this point, though, that the Necrophos really takes over the lane. Yeah. KP, sitting at the level 3 mark, doesn't seem like much, but it's pretty hard to kill him off at this at this point. Unless you bring over a third hero to rotate, but even then, it's still going to be pretty darn hard. It's like Joe Cam's waiting for a setup up a top lane. It's not going to be that easy to kill Arjit off, though, even at level 3. So, FBZ does have an extra skill point ready to throw out. Looks like they will go for the Fisher, but he has been blocked off. He does get the Split Earth as well. Arjit, though, will throw out the stun. Joe Cam with a nice block again, but he eats through the trees, and Arjit will end up being perfectly fine. He'll just salve up through all the damage that was just dealt. Yeah, and that's a good attempt coming out from Boom ID, just not quite enough. The blockage was not quite there. There was still a little bit of space of, on that Fisher, so Ajit could just walk away, and that he does. Even without the support, it's really hard to kill off this Great King. Ooh, okay, ends up finding Ninja Boogie top lane. Didn't quite catch that one, but looks like it wasn't too hard of a kill. Meanwhile, Kezcute being chased down by Raging Potato, and a nice body block with the trains. Keskut probably going to end up falling here, and he will. Raging Potato really abusing that micro quite well. Yeah, that's a really good time for this NP. He's finding everything he wants. He's being really effective on this map so far. He hasn't even done a rotation out yet, so still a lot more to be done here. Oh, FBZ as well, going down just to Ninja Boogie, pretty much. Banerins as well, going to be coming up, so... The side of Maneski going to be able to grab two at the top lane. And it looks like they're also going to be able to grab two banner runes at the bot lane. So they've left one for the moment, but that's the one left on their side of the river anyway. Four banner runes to Maneski. That is a pretty big deal going on at the five minute mark. Definitely is. It's good. To, it's Again, it's good injection of gold and widens their lead to 3k. Really great start here. They are going onto KP though. He has Ghost Shroud, but he doesn't commit it yet. Now he will, but they are making the chase KP. Can he actually survive this? Fervian has another stun in a four seconds or so. It looks like they will not kill off KP though. Kescute continuing the chase, but now KP will turn around. Shouldn't be a kill here though, KP. Fortune Zen purifying flames as well. Kescute looking for one more purifying, and he does get it. Joe Cam still turning around onto Raging Potato, and Raging still trying to find this kill onto Joe Cam. So it looks like he will not find it, and he may have given his own life away. Raging, trying to go for the TP, but the fortune's in again from Kezcute. You cannot be that greedy up against an Oracle this early on. Meanwhile, the Definitely. top lane FBZ about to fall. Ninja Boogie doesn't have another stroke of fate available, so it looks like he will be able to run away. I apologize, John, you were saying. I mean, it came down to the fact that KP had seven, six, six or seven stick charges before he died. He held on to it. I think if he managed to use that, he might have been able to secure the kill. His death pulse was just going off cooldown as well. So just a bit of a slightly greedy play there. And it looks like KP is going to have to be watching out because he's overextending. He's doing it again. Fortune's end will come out. Joe Cam with the Fisher as well. Now the follow-up stun from Fervian. Don't forget though, he has the ghost form, so he should be okay. And it looks like they will allow him to walk out. But you look at top lane, John. Arjit and Rage Potato will go ahead and take care of that T1 tower. And we talked about it in the draft phase. But if the Sven has a bad time in the laning phase, he's not going to be able to help his team clear out, the, clear out these skeletons. And as you can see, that is the case. They're going for T2s right now. And this is definitely what Mineski uh, needs to do so far. And they are doing quite well. And good attempt from Goku to try to find that kill, but they'll only get the MP. Oh, they will indeed. Just no stuns coming out for the Wraith King, but like you said, Raging Potato will end up losing his life. That'll make it a 4-4 four four, though. Still 2k net worth lead to the side of Mineski. But Boom ID is certainly biting back. So you've got to look at mid lane again. Moon is basically free farming right now on that OD and hasn't been disrupted this whole time. 
Now, he hasn't got the top net worth in the, on the board, but we know these ODs. Once they get a few levels up, they're able to catch up quite fast. This is going to be a big concern for Boom ID if they don't take care of it soon. I mean, Moon had a pretty rough time in lane. It wasn't as dominant well, as you think over in Pato. Servian getting jumped right now. There's four heroes. Reaper Scythe comes out. Oh no, Fate's Edict will block the Scythe. So Keskute at least helping with that respawn timer. Though now he's going to be chased down. And Eski will ignore him. And instead, of course, they will go for that T1 tower once again. But now Makoto trying to defend for his team. He doesn't get the greatest static link. Jokam is there, however, to help Arjit. Will end up going down. That's his first life. Nice Fisher comes out from Joe Cam though. Makoto is still being chased down. Bates Edict will be there, but it will not matter. Now Joe Cam will be chased down as well by Maneski, and they are just all around this Earthshaker. He does not have a TP either, so he's just going to try and juke them out a bit. And it looks like he is eventually going to die from that Death Pulse. They will get the T1 Tower. Joe Cam still alive somehow. Ninja Boogie not going to let him go. One more right click will do it. Joe Cam does buy a TP, but it's on cooldown anyway, so he will end up losing his life, and they do end up losing that tower as well. I really like seeing this coming out from Mineski. This is really how you should be playing this kind of lineup, especially with that breaking again. You have massive early game potential, but as you scale on, it's not going to work out. So getting all this early pressure done, it's going to help them snowball and give them a bit more of an advantage as the game goes on, which you really want, because you're going to taper off past the 30, 35 minute mark. Moon went up top, found FBZ, commits the Sanity's Eclipse, and then just uses the Astral. And it was just a very easy kill for him. That'll make it a 4-8 to eight now, around the 9.5 minute mark. Moon looks like he's picked up a Midas as well. He just needs to bring the recipe out on the Courier, and perhaps buy the gloves, but he'll be able to just get them from the side shop. He's now at the top of the net worth board as well, Moon. So with that Midas, he's really going to start to escalate on that OD. He definitely will. I think the key thing is the EXP you get. Uh, the gold is a bit of a boon as, as well, since the OD doesn't really flash farm the fastest again, as we mentioned. But it's really the EXP you want. You're going to want to really escalate in your levels as fast as you can. Get the max levels on Arcane Orb up and running. And ensure that you can get all that in stolen team fights and... Just drop a Santi's Eclipse after. It's an easy way to burst down all these heroes. They're not the highest in int game. Oh, boom ID. In a bit of a struggle here. 5k net worth behind right now. It's certainly not where you want to be with the draft that they've gotten. They should really be in the lead, but... Mineski just playing their draft one. Well, look at Arjit. Goes in mid lane. Thinks about going on Makoto, but thinks better of it. And will back off again. Still has a minute left on that reincarnation, so perhaps just doesn't want to risk his life. And instead, they'll rotate down bot, though. Fervian, gonna get caught out. KP scouts him out with the invis. Arjit, of course, has the stun to follow up. Reaper Scythe's available anyway. Fervian, one more right click. There you go. Reaper Scythe will finish the job off. You see Keskyu try to TP in to get the Fates Edict off in time, but it is way too late, and KP is now just making the chase. There's no real way to stop him, but it doesn't really matter. You already found the Sven. Yeah, again, that's a nice little pickup for Mineski. They really are slowing down this event out. In fact, he feels so pressured he's going for the Midas, but that just slows down his early game again. Boom ID, forced to rotate down to the bot lane, Aunt Jid and Raging Potato. Were there again, just pushing it in. Just not much. They've got to keep... There's not much they can do. They've got to keep rotating over to save these towers. And I mean, they can do that when they rotate, but the only problem is you leave both other lanes alone. KP, he starts pushing in that mid lane now, going for that final T1 tower. And again, Moon is just free farming. Now FBZ, he's going to get chased down. Arjit with the Inkswell should be able to find FBZ though. False Promise does come out. Now they'll actually go for a chase onto Raging Potato and looks like they will find him in the end. There's also a nice fissure there from Joe Camp to actually block the parving, so they couldn't help Raging Potato out. And with that, Vervian going to go ahead and quickly, quickly clear the ancient stacks they have while he has the god strength up. But that was a nice pick for the side of Boom ID. It doesn't look like it's going to stop Mineski from pushing in, though. Yeah, I mean, that's really just a support NP. You haven't lost too much yet. And you can still apply pressure, but looks like Mineski has kind of backed off for the most part. Just Ajit farming that creep wave. Vervian gonna find a nice regen rune, though Stroke of Fate will not connect to Cancel it either. 
Irvine actually going for the Midas pickup as well. So it looks like he's given up on this early to mid game. He's just going to go ahead and set up for the late game. And for once, John, I do feel like this is probably the right decision from him. I mean, he did kind of queue it up earlier and he does finish it off. The fo focusing on that later game is pretty smart. Again, they do have a bit stronger skill ability, really depending on how much Moon is getting. And to be fair, Moon is also kind of gearing up for that with his own Midas. So it's it's still a good item on Sven. Again, he hasn't found his early game timing. It's just I worry about your late game potential overall because Minetsky had too good of a start that, you know, they, they just have they just have that significant lead and doesn't look like there's any real opening for Boom to kind of snowball back just yet. Oh, look at Moon. He's looking for a target now and mid lane is being pushed in. They're just making sure nobody's in the east side jungle or west side jungle, but Makoto gonna run in mid lane. They are looping around from behind Mineski. They want to set up for this T1. Arjit, of course, has the reincarnation, so he's happy to run in and risk his life. He does go straight on to the left rack, though. Faint's Edict will be there to protect. Now they'll get started, though. Sanity's being dropped by Moon straight away. Reaper Scythe as well, though. Faint's Edict and False Promise will protect the Razor. He probably still will end up losing his life. Now they'll chase Keskut as well. Get rid of that pesky Oracle, and it looks like they will do so pretty successfully. They already found Makoto as well, and the T1 Tower. There's just no saving it now. Yeah, I mean, the Sven is nowhere near that area, so he wouldn't have even been able to join that team fight. Uh, FPZ does get away safely, but again, that tier 1 is just going to go down, and it looks like Mineski's not going to back off. They ping out that tier 2, and it looks like they might be going for more. No, KP does leave. Well, he wants to be able to protect, protect that T1 top tower now. Moon does stick around for one extra Astral, but then will back off, and he does already have a 4 staff up on the OD, so can do this and I mean you look at Moon's farm it's pretty darn big for the 15 minute mark and they are going to go for a team fight now on Ninja but the Fisher actually blocks them out from that kill uh, Jid now also going for the stun on FBZ but he's going to lose his reincarnation on life though no they missed the stun anyway the uh, Jid going to be able to walk out safely no lives lost and again Mineski just finding way too much I mean they found another three bounty runes as well I believe this whole game, Boom IDs only found two bounty runes. Well, apart from the starting two, you, you could count that as four, I, I suppose, but four bounty runes in 15 minutes for Boom ID. It's not a good sign, man. Ooh, Makoto gets jumped mid lane. Gonna cop a lot of damage. Fate's Edict is there, but what does it matter? This Razor cannot survive once Arjit throws out the stun, and this could mean they go for the tier two mid. Yeah, it's a massive opening for the side of Mineski, and they should be able to abuse this one and really get that push in on that tier 2. Again, they still have Reincarnation up on Ajit as well, and he has his armlet now, so he can just play around with that if he wants to tank the tower. Hervian just backs out, goes to the bot lane, doesn't want to even be near this mid lane anymore. I can't really blame him, but Mineski just sticking as 5. They're going to go for another out of tower. KP's already set up for that top T2 now, and sooner rather than later, they're going to run out of space to farm. Like, Fervian, he's just trying his best to push out the bot lane and just get a bit of gold and XP going for himself, but I mean, once that final out of T2's gone, where the hell do you farm up on the Sven? Yeah, it starts to get smaller and smaller here for Boom as to the places where they can find that golden EXP. At some point, you might actually start dipping into the enemy jungle, because... Honestly, Mineski hasn't spent too much time there. That could be the safest spot. We have seen, of course, that is a pretty viable strategy to do, but Mineski is gonna take this rush, and there are no clear tools of uh, Boom to really initiate here. No blinks up yet on any, any of their initiators, so this might just go down to Mineski uncontested. Does seem like they need to defend. In fact, they're gonna go for a team fight from Mineski's yet. They don't even want to take the Roshan, though they do end up losing Ninja Boogie. That is not a great start. KB now gonna be chased down FBZ. He wants to go for this, though he's copying way too much damage, but False Promise will save him for the moment. There is an Astral that came out though, but they get the reincarnation life. FBZ now back in the team fight, but he's gone. Makoto, Fervian, they go in. Sanity's Eclipse though will end up finding Joe Cam now as well. Fervian not really doing much damage at all. And he has to back out of there, and Makoto, he was the same. Looks like Moon will end up finding FBZ on the on the buyback, but 
he might end up losing his life. KP moving forward after Makoto, but they found the Leshrac and they'll take him down. KP now though losing a lot of HP, but what does it matter if you can't finish the job? Boom ID. They get the hell out of there, but Moon is still chasing Kezcute. Raging Potato actually finding Makoto by himself as well, just before he gets to the shrine. And I can't believe Mineski leave the Roshan pit to go for a fight when it looks like Boom ID didn't even want to fight. Yeah, it was rather strange. It didn't look like Boom ID had any idea that Roche was really going on, but they go outside and force the fight. Maybe they were scared of being caught in that tight area. Again, it would have been disastrous if Jokam did have a blink, but he's not anywhere near close at initiation tool. And Roche really is just free for Mineski. They, they could have gone for it risk-free, but they managed to find two kills, I guess. And they don't really lose out in much, so it's still a bit of a win for them. It certainly is. Just having a look at Joe Cam on that Earthshaker right now, John. He's just got nothing going for him. Sitting at 2.5k net worth. Nowhere near a Blink Dagger. He still needs about 1.2k gold. And he hasn't been able to help in these team fights very much, apart from some Fisher blocks, but we haven't seen one Echo come out yet. And with all these minions that are being spawned, you think it'd be some great Echo opportunities, but he really needs that Blink Dagger to initiate. Yeah, it's just really rough without that initiation tool. And again, you can't really cap close while you have no way of just getting in the middle of everyone. So they will have to prioritize Joe Camp for some farm now. But Joe Camp gonna go ahead and TP the hell out of there. SQ will do the same. They do not want to deal with Raging Potato right now. And of course, KP will also show up on the Necrophos. I mean, you want to prioritize that blink, but the problem is there's nowhere left to farm. Like, Fervian's already having a hard enough time with the Sven finding a spot to farm. Where the hell do you give an Earthshaker farm? Yeah, again, that's really down to them losing way too much space early on and just not having that response to the push. I mean, something like a Jakir would have worked well. I think that was really the key to the last time we saw this combination. Arjit. Gonna find the Razor. They do soulbind up the Sven. And, of course, the Oracle. And, well, False Promise isn't even gonna come out. No, it won't. He doesn't get it off in time. Fervian now getting chased down. Inkswell will stop him. And I don't know about this one. Four Boom ID. They've lost Makoto as well. Moon ends up finding that kill. And it looks like they are gonna go straight after that mid-T3 tower. Fervian's already saying good game. I don't blame him for that either. I do believe this is GG. 20 minutes in. They might try to go for a final defense here, but... They need to land a big echo. They need to land something. Boom. They just successfully defend just by buying back on Makoto, but... Mineski, they were thinking about still going in. They do opt to back off. They did get a BKB just up on Moon as well, but he just needs it to bring it out on the Courier. And perhaps once they go for that BKB, once they finish off that final tier 2 tower, that's when they'll go high ground again. Yeah, again, they still have all the tools they need for that high ground siege. They still have that Aegis up on Moon. They have all their spells up. I think the one thing they are just really worried about is a great Echo Slam from... Jokam, but he hasn't even gotten one Echo Slam off this entire game yet. So it's been a rough time for this Earthshaker. Well, he's about 700 gold off that blink, but again, it, it's just, it feels like a lot more than 700 considering he can't get any farm. He's basically going to wait for a passive gold to get up to that point. Perhaps if he finds a kill in a team fight, that would give him enough. They are giving him farm priority down at the bot lane, so he is trying to rush it. I think this is the right play from Boom ID. With those treants, he might be able to finish it off, but he's going to be so careful that Mineski don't loop around and go for the gank attempt. Well, they're pinging out the mid lane again, so it looks like they want to ignore any heroes and just go straight for that mid T3 tower. They have the bot wave of creeps, so they don't have to go through backdoor protection, and now the mid wave does come in as well. Jokam so close to the blink, in fact, he needs about 100 gold for that. He's probably going to have to sell something off, and he does go pick it up now. This surprise reveal could be what they needed. A lot of treants and skeletons there, but how does he find it? Arjit going to run in. There is a soulbind coming out onto Keskude and FBZ. They've already lost that mid rat. One of Atos, though, will come out. We'll be on Raging Potato, but there's no follow-up to that. 
And Fervian actually just TPing to the uh, the opposing jungle. Just farming up while his teammates are trying to go for a fight. And it looks like in the end, Boom ID will not actually engage. And I think that's perfectly fair enough. Yeah, a very cautious play from Boom here. Joe Cam really not taking that risk to try to go for that slam. Mineski wasn't really clumped up either, so it would have been very hard to get the ideal initiation. And they just kind of lose their racks and tier 3 for free. But again, they still have that hold potential with the Shaker, at very least for their high ground. But they are losing way too much around the map. Now, Fervian is finding decent enough farm. He's not too far behind. He's actually second in that worth. But it doesn't feel like it's enough at this point. He has the BKB. He's not going to have buyback if he does fall in that last fight. So has to be really careful with his positioning right now. Kiss cute. Might get caught out. Moon, he has a four staff available and he does go for the Astral. Now, Joe Cam and FBZ are there if they want to help out. But it looks like they probably will just let him go. Reaper Scythe will get the job done from KP. Now, bot lane. They are going after that Earthshaker, but the blink does come out. Unfortunately, he does get Ooh. caught by Arjit. The Sprout gave the vision. Joe Cam now does lose his life. And like you said, he has no buyback. Unfortunately as well, that was the blink reveal. So Mineski going to be aware of it for that next high ground attempt. And things just look even worse for Boom ID now. Just don't know what they can do about this. I mean, it's just really rough. They have no space to grow bigger. They've lost way too much in that early game. Now, you know, they have to play the farm game, but it, they don't have space for it. Like, you expect the Razor to at least have enough to really bully the lineup from Mineski, but the response from Mineski is just way too strong. They, again, they just had way too good of a start. They're at 20k net worth lead now, Mike. At 24 minutes in, 6 to 22. It's very... I have to say it, it's really lopsided right now going the way of Mineski. It, it almost seems one-sided, really. You still have the tools on Boom ID. Jokam responds fairly quickly. And, and you still have that Blink Echo Slam, but there's just no opportunity for Boom ID to get that off. Well, there will be a smoke. FBZ breaks his own smoke, though. I'm not sure if they realize that on Mineski. Of course, they do have a 10-second BKB on Fervian. We'll see if they can make something work with that. Arjit, the closest target, and they are running the right way, but the only problem is the 25-minute bounty, 25 minute bounty runes came up, and they get it again. Four on Mineski, though. Oh, the oh. stun dodge. Arjit, just way too quick on the fingers. That is not great news. Look at FBZ mid lane. He's all alone now. Uh, actually, his team are backing him up soon. Joe Cam looking for an attempt. FBZ gets jumped on. There's the Echo, but it's not going to be enough damage. In fact, it's hardly anything. The Sanities gets dropped. Makoto's gone as well. They've lost three already. Now FBZ, he's gone as well. And what the hell do you do if you boom ID? Except call good game. And they will. And you can't blame him. Fervian, he'll pop the God Strength, but he's anything but a God right now, John. Reaper Scythe. We'll take him back to heaven. That's a full team wipe from Mineski in game number one. What a dominant performance from this dire side. Definitely is. 6 to 27, 26 minutes in, 26k network lead from Mineski. They just find everything they want from the lanes and really shut Boom ID out. It's, it's something else when you watch Southeast Asia.